Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're gonna to do some stick welding and I'm gonna demonstrate the three most common uh, stick welding electrodes for welding steel. Um, these three electrodes represent the three different categories of stick welding rods that you can get. So pretty much any rod that you get for steel is gonna fall into one of these three uh, types. I'm just welding up some quarter inch thick uh, hot rolled flat bar I cut up. Um, you can get away with welding over the mill scale in a lot of cases when they're stick welding, but uh, as a best practice, it's good to remove it or knock it down. I like these little purple strip discs off Amazon. They're pretty cheap and they, they do a pretty good job at removing the mill scale without getting down into your steel. I'll throw a link to these discs down in the description. They're pretty cheap. So we'll start off by talking about 6013. Now 6013 is a rutile electrode and there are other uh, rutile electrodes, but 6013 is the popular one. And in other parts of the world, a lot of countries around, it's used for just about everything in industrial settings. Here in the US, it's not very popular for industrial type work like pipe, structural steel, things like that. The other two rods we're gonna look at are gonna be a lot more popular there. Um, but it is still used a lot for hobby work, for farm repairs and fabrication, and you create a really strong joint. It works great, let's uh, try it out. So you can look up charts with the amperage uh, for each of them, or on the package you can find it. About 110 amps is gonna be pretty good for a 1 8 inch 6013. So I'm gonna strike an arc here, and one thing that's really nice with 6013 is it's pretty easy to strike an arc with compared to uh, other electrodes. Not that it can't still be a frustrating experience, especially as a beginner, um, but it is easier even for a rod that's been welded with before. Now when I weld with 6013, I can just move steadily along and feed my electrode in. Notice I'm propping with my uh, left hand there to help guide the rod smoothly in. Now there is some spatter that you will get from a 6013. That's just the nature of how the electrode runs. Notice that bright spot is your weld puddle and behind it where it's more orange is the slag falling over. This is nice when it runs this way, but sometimes that slag can get mixed in with the weld puddle with the 6013. That's the biggest drawback that I've found. And when that happens, you can end up with it welded just on one side and the other side was just a bunch of slag baked in there. If you've run into that, usually you can correct it by turning up your amperage a little bit, um, but that's the big pitfall of 6013. Overall though, it actually works pretty well. All right, so here's the 6013 as welded with the slag on it. You can see that spatter there. Um, that's gonna be typical no matter what you do with uh, 6013 to some extent. Okay, so here's the finished bead on 6013. It came out nice and smooth. I mean, you get a good, strong joint. And 6013 is just pretty easy to run. It runs well on a buzz box in a lot of parts of the world. Um, it's the only rod just about that you can find uh, available. And so it's, it's a good choice. The next rod I'll demo here is a 6010. Um, this is a cellulosic type electrode. So it actually has some hydrocarbons like cellulose uh, material in the flux. Uh, even sawdust is, is a pretty common component in the flux on a 6010. And so this rod actually punches really deep and it freezes really fast. So for this reason, you usually have to use some kind of manipulation. Now 6010 and other cellulosic rods like a 6011 are great where you need to punch through some rust or dirt or things like that because they really can uh, tolerate a lot more of that than other electrodes. They're also really good for root passes where you have to push through to the backside and they're used in pipe welding a lot for that reason. Now 6010 is gonna need a lower amperage than the 110 we were set at for 6013. So I'm gonna turn that down to 90 amps, which should be pretty good for a 1 8 inch 6010. Now 6010 in particular won't run on every type of machine. You have to have DC polarity and you also need to have a machine with enough arc voltage and enough power to really push it in there. And a lot of inverters don't have that, but a lot of them do too. 
Um, if you have a machine that isn't capable of running a 6010, you can use a 6011 instead. It behaves in a very similar way. Um, it just doesn't quite pack the same punch. A 6010 and 6011 too, they're really easy to strike an arc with. I mean, it fires right up and comes in strong and hot. So I like these rods for tack welding things together. That's why I use these to tack weld these coupons all together. Now notice I'm moving the electrode back and forth uh, a little bit as I weld. And every time I do that, it creates another ripple. But if I just were to camp out there, it would cut in too deep. And so I need to do this to control heat. Um, when you're welding like an open route, sometimes you need to do that. And sometimes you're able to just stay ahead of things and move quickly. But generally speaking, on a fillet weld like this, you'll either need to use, this is a whip and pause type motion where I'm just digging down in uh, ahead, just kind of digging metal out is what it feels like and then moving back and pausing to let it all fill in. You can also use just small circles uh, as you weld. That's another option to be able to manipulate your puddle, but usually you need some sort of motion like that. Now notice it's kind of fireworks coming off of here. A lot of sparks, you get some spatter. That's just the nature of uh, this rod. So it cuts deep and it freezes fast. That's what to remember about 6010. So 6010 slag is really crusty. And often you can just use a wire wheel and a grinder to remove this, or even a wire brush will do a lot of it. Um, if you don't have a wire wheel and a grinder, I think just raking a chipping hammer over to break things up a little and then brushing is the best way to do it. So if you take a look at this, you see it's not perfectly smooth um, like that 6013 bead or the 7018 that we'll look at later. Uh, it has little ripples in it where each uh, time I went through that whip and pause motion, I paused and it filled in almost like a, a stack of dimes type look. Now I haven't run 6010 in months so you know uh, this is a little inconsistent but when you're tuned up on it you can get a really nice look um, with 6010 a lot of pipe fence that you'll see uh, around as well with 6010 you can see those ripples smokers things like that now the last rod that we're going to talk about is a 7018 7018 lays in really smooth and it's my favorite rod to run there's very low spatter the slag peels off easily and it just works great now 7018 is a basic electrode. So basic is the type and it in particular is a low hydrogen electrode. So you might see things about 7018 needs to be stored in an oven and in the welding codes, that's true. There are those storage requirements because if it gets moisture in the flux, it can deposit some hydrogen in your weld. This confuses a lot of people who are welding at home or in their garage and, and they'll go towards a 6013 or 6011 or something like that because they don't have a rod oven. Well, you're not depositing less hydrogen by using one of those rods. You're probably depositing more with a 6013 and for sure with like a 6010, you're putting a ton of hydrogen in there. The reason that it's required is when you're welding thick sections of high strength steel, you can get hydrogen induced cracking. But if you're not welding thick sections and it's not high strength steel, the risk of hydrogen induced cracking is really, really low, even if you do have some hydrogen. And so, so that's why, you know, 6013, 6010 will be fine. And a uh, 7018 that's just been stored in a plastic container is not going to be really worse from that perspective in those situations. However, if you are welding to a code or you are welding thick sections of high strength steel, storage in an oven, essential. Um, you need to follow all of those things. It can be a big deal to have that hydrogen induced cracking. But if you're just doing some hobby projects at home, I can't tell you what to do, but for me, storing them in a plastic container is, you know, just uh, works just fine. And, and the risk of hydrogen induced cracking, I'm telling you, is, it's pretty low. Of all these rods, 7018 can be the most difficult to strike an arc with, especially um, when you're restarting an electrode uh, because the rod actually burns up into the flux and it can also get a little bit of slag on the end. When you run it though, notice I can keep my arc length what appears to be really short and even notice that flux kind of bump into the sides from time to time because the arc is burning up inside of that flux. 
there's much less spatter than anything else. And what I really like about running 7018 is notice how distinguished that bright uh, area where the weld puddle is from the slag that follows behind it. So it's really nice to run uh, from that perspective and just lays in really smooth. The slag is easy to remove. Now notice here at the end, watch as I finish the weld. I'm going to flick the rod um, when I'm done. So I'll flick it. And then notice that little blob of slag that flew off the end. That's going to make it much easier to restart the metal because I uh, flicked that off. So that's a little tip for you when you're running 7018. Now 7018, where would you use this? Everywhere in my opinion. Now um, 7018 is good for just general fabrication. It's used a lot for uh, pipe welding, you know, fill passes, things like that. Um, your cap passes, structural steel, and, and regular fabrication projects. So 7018 really, for me, is my go-to um, whenever I have the chance to use it. The downsides to it are it can be a little bit harder to strike an arc with. And the traditional 7018 is a DC only rod, um, but they do have an AC version. In fact, most of the 7018 or a lot of it that you'll get if you look at the spec sheet is rated for AC anymore. It has those arc stabilizers and the flux. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what to use. At the end of the day, um, just getting your hands on some and trying it, you'll get a feel for them. And uh, learning to run a few different electrodes is gonna benefit you a lot as you come across different applications. I just want to point out the way that I support making these videos and uh, all of the costs associated with that is with my online courses. Um, they are available. There's a MIG, TIG, stick, a fabrication course, and uh, they're 39 bucks a piece, or you can get all four for 59 on my website. I keep them as affordable as possible. I'll walk you through as a beginner from step one, every step of the way to help you learn a lot faster than you will watching YouTube videos. And if you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. No hard feelings there. Um, so check those out uh, if that might be helpful for you and uh, we'll see you next time.